Recently, I did a basic photogrammetry video. Link up here, you can go and check it out. And in the comments, I received a comment from a fellow named Luke Fran. He suggests, buy the largest Lazy Susan bearing you can find and make a donut shaped turntable. Mount the camera on a boom to it with a counterweight on the other side. Place the stationary object in the middle Point the camera inwards, rotate, and shoot. Let us know how it goes. I thought that was pretty brilliant. So I built one of those devices. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell, hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. So the first thing I did to start this project was to do a little sketch. Orthographic view, top view, camera on the right, object in the middle, Stationary turntable in the center. Camera rotates around that. Here's a little side view so you can see what we're going to make. I mocked it up super quick in 3D so you could visualize it a little bit better. Camera on the right, object in the middle, Lazy Susan bearing, screen on the left. I just lay things out on a big sheet of cardboard to get a rough idea of scale, dimensions, and we're gonna cut this thing out of some wood. So just to be clear, this is really a proof of concept for me. This is not some final production design thing. It's something I'm mocking up. I don't even know if it's gonna work and I'm really just testing it out. It seems like it should, but I need to mock this thing up before I build like a final good one where I really spend some time or some money. So we're mocking it up out of just crappy, cheap plywood. It happens to be the box that my laser cutter came in. So I have lots of this cheap, crappy China plywood. And it's going to be perfect for this project. So we'll cut out some of these pieces. You can see my son Wyatt here. He's cutting out the inner circle where the Lazy Susan goes are on. We're also using the laser cutter just to help us cut stuff straight kind of as a guide or a template and then we're going to come back through with the bandsaw real quick and cut along those lines it also helps illuminate the burn marks on the wood so that we don't get black charcoal marks all over us just uh, using the laser as a guide so we're building a few things in this case this is the arm that's going to support the camera and I'm gluing couple pieces together because it needs to be a little bit stronger use a little bit of um, MDF masonite and this is one of the turntables uh, this looks like the base that goes at the very bottom that the lazy Susan gets mounted to and then we're gonna cut out another one this is the little base where the object is gonna rest on top of don't worry it's all gonna come together you're gonna see how it looks and of course, I didn't use the laser cutter to actually mark the middle of the circle. So I'm doing a little bit of old school so I can find the middle using a compass here. Lay out where that Lazy Susan's going to be. And I got a rough idea of where the center is. I'm going to raise that turntable up or that platform up. And the other stuff will rotate all around that. Here's the Lazy Susan bearing that I bought. You can buy this at any big box, home, goods, store near you. Just screwing it in. All this stuff by uh, manual. The plywood's not very thick, and I end up having to cut off some of the screws. That's the through hole that allows me to screw the other screws back onto the box side. And here you can see i got to cut down the screws that stick through because I didn't have any of the right length. The wood's pretty thin um, and it varies in thickness so some stuck through more than others. 
I'm just using a Dremel tool here to cut them off, keep things kind of safe, and uh, so nobody gets hurt or scratched or anything. Got it like slow mo. It looks so good. Can be doing the boringest thing. Slow mo, it looks amazing. Anyway, back to putting stuff back together. The screen on this thing, which is going to remain constant uh, as the background, is merely going to be a piece of chipboard or cardboard uh, white, and I'm just putting in some blocks that I can uh, slot the wood into. So the theory behind this entire thing is that the object stays stationary, the lighting stays constant, and we're going to move the camera around the object, and we're going to keep the background in line with the camera as well. And so that's going to provide us kind of like a constant background that should get cut out of the image. This is the mount for the camera, basically something strong uh, to hold the camera in place. It doesn't have to be super sturdy, but it does have to be relatively strong to support the camera. And again, just screwing the stuff on by hand. This is a proof of concept. I'm not going to invest too much time into something that I'm not even 100% sure is going to work. One of the other things we need here, you see that back end kind of bouncing around, and that's where there's going to be a lot of weight from the camera. So we're going to put a couple little feet on the bottom of this thing, and those feet are literally going to drag on the tabletop surface. And we're just going to use a little piece of cedar here. We'll end up waxing it up, and uh, that will rotate just fine on the surface of the table where this whole thing is mounted. So to glue everything together, I'm just going to use a little bit of E6000 glue to glue everything together. Uh, you know why it's called E, by the way? Oh, yeah, my name. Works really good for this kind of stuff. Mixed materials, this adhesive works fantastic for that. All right, we'll add a little weight on here and let this dry overnight. And in the morning, we'll be able to test it out. All right, let's pop on the stationary screen in the back. Pretty simple. I'm just going to attach a clamp here to help hold it up uh, because it's not quite strong enough to hold the mat board. You'll also notice there in front of the object uh, is a pin. And I have marked off increments of 10 degrees on that table. So that pin is mainly there just to guide me so I can take a photo every 10 degrees around this object. I'm manually attaching the camera here with a cold shoe mount that I use for all of my gear and then I have some holes drilled in that rail so I can move the camera wherever I want. Some sort of quick feature or quick release feature would be nice but for this case we're just testing things out. So we take a photograph every 10 degrees, 360 degrees all the way around it. This is the mid-level shot there's one at the bottom and one at the top so the theory goes here is that with this photogrammetry software that i'm using from uh it's metashape uh the lighting wants to be constant the object stays stationary so that the lighting can stay constant and we're moving the camera around the object this rig merely allows me to hold the camera steady, making things much faster. And I'm tricking it by using a constant background. I'm also using a very uh, long depth of field so I can get the bottle in focus completely every single shot. I will link to the equipment that I'm using below. I'm using a Panasonic GH4 and kind of a stock pancake lens. You can see every single one of these shots comes in absolutely fantastic i'm rather stunned that it works and here is the data that it produced probably took about 30 to 45 minutes crunching in the software in meta shape and uh, produced me some pretty fantastic data this data should be repeatable for me every single time by placing the bottle in there I didn't even use a diffuser on top like I did in past videos. Here you can see me rotating around the object. 
So we're going to pull this into Fusion 360. We're going to export it out as an OBJ and pull it in Fusion and check it out what it looks like. Quality is excellent. I do do a little bit of cleanup here on the bottom of the bottle. I could make it a solid if I wanted, but I'm really testing out the concept and I'm super pleased with the results. So we're going to export this. Let's move over to Fusion. You should be able to pull this into any CAD application. Like I said, I'm using Fusion 360. It comes in here. we we'll just straighten out the object, get it square to the rest of the world. And you can see looks absolutely fantastic. Probably better than the previous scan I got. That may have to do with holding the camera steady and just the whole setup. So without too much effort, I built myself a scanning rig that allows me repeatable, excellent quality results every single time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.